Um, first off, I would like to thank everybody um, around the country, around the world, for supporting me and my family through this um, difficult, very, very, very hard struggle. But like, um, it's finally over. Now I would like to take the time to reunite with my family and try to get my life back on track. You know, um, I'm not about to play the blame game. Um, the, the blame game with nobody. You know, it's it's over. I'm out. Like that's that's all I really wanted was my freedom. So um, from this day forward, I'm just trying to move forward and um, put all this behind me and, and go from there. Live life. You know, um, do some things I've never been able to do before. Like learn how to drive and like go get my driver's license and things like that. You know, I don't. Um, yeah. That's about it, but thank you everybody for being here and supporting me. Yeah. He just told me not to cry, so forgive me for crying. Okay, I just first, first I have to just give all the honor and the, first I give all the honor and the glory and the highest praise to God because I know today wouldn't have been possible without God. I have so many people to think no one is forgotten. Valerie, we love you so much. Days that I thought that I couldn't make it. Val pulled me out. She kept me positive. She gave me what I needed when the closest people to me couldn't give me what I needed. So I'm so ever grateful. Bill Proctor, from day one, you have supported us. When everybody was calling my son an animal and that he done this, you stood with me. You came to every court date. You called me when my phone didn't ring, but it was you. Thank you so much. Roberto, I thank you and I love you so much. I love you. Gabby, thank you. You fought for my son and you didn't even have to. Thank you, Gabby. It's Bishop Hears for opening up his doors to us. Andrea, you heard our story. Seven years ago on Mason, you came out when it was below zero, when it was only five of us doing a rally. Thank you, I love you. Apostle, a man of God, you are another one that has been here for this family. You did everything you could do for us, and we're so ever grateful. My family, I know I was rough when Devontae was locked up, but y'all didn't understand me a lot of times, what I went through, but thank y'all. Diane, to the rest of the media, Ed White, oh, you've been a trooper. Associated Press, thank you. George Hunter, where are you at? I love you, I love you, I love you. We love you. It is so many people. Sergeant B, to your team, thank you. You showed me that all Detroit police are not corrupt. Thank you for that. To the whole media, everybody, Diane, I say keep this family in prayer. I laid in the bed this morning crying because I still don't believe he's home. So I'm smothering him and he's just like, mama, let my hand go, mama. I'm on him like, I just, I'm just on him right now and he don't understand it, but I'm on him. If I can cut his food up and feed him, I probably would cut his food up and feed him too, but I'm on him. But I, I'm not gonna be in front of y'all much longer, but um, if I didn't mention you, don't think you're forgotten by the Sanford family. 
It's just so much going on and so many faces that I see. So no one is forgotten. We love each and every one of you guys. Keep us in prayer. Brother Ed, I love you and Capuchin Soup Kitchen. I love you guys. Um, let no one think that we have forgot about you because we're not responding back to no one or this is a new day for us. This is a new life for us. This is a new beginning for us. So with that said is we love each and every one of you. Please, like Apostle Wright, I'll say, keep us in prayer because right now we need the prayers more than we ever needed the prayers, especially for Devante. He needs the prayer. His whole childhood life has been taken away from him. He missed prom, junior high school, high school, and everything. So we don't take it lightly nor for granted. Uh, whatever you might have did, even if you sent a dollar card to us, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'm going to also say, with this being said, keep smothers in your prayers also. Finger at nobody. Because it took him to do the right thing to get him out. So keep him in your prayers too. We are forever grateful for him too. So I turn it over to Mr. Bill Proctor at this time. Thank you guys for coming out. Thank you for all you have ever did. And we love you. Some of you may not know, but uh, the reason I'm standing here with the family is because among Detroit media, Uh, to tell what had happened here. Um, it's been a long road for nine years. <clears throat> it is a difficult emotional time for this family, ecstatic about his return, but clearly upset about the words of the Wayne County prosecutor this morning. The people of Wayne County, if not everyone who has ever held a P number, should be ashamed of what Kim Worthy said this morning essentially blaming much of what happened on a 14-year-old child who simply appeared at the wrong place at the wrong time and spoke to the wrong detective. By the time it was over, this was an orchestrated prosecution. The Detroit police did nothing enough, enough to bring justice to the four people who were murdered and the one person who managed to survive. They took the first person who spoke to them at the crime scene at the base of the yellow tape and swept him up. And from that moment forward, the police and the prosecutor essentially got together to put this child in prison. Kim Worthy did not mention today that in this long running explanation of process and procedure, there was no seeking of true justice. It was just a matter of taking step one to step two to this judge, to this prosecutor, to this appeal. The real bottom line is she had the authority that she essentially did not use to go to the chief judge, to go to one of the innocence projects and at least have a conversation. If she couldn't pull the trigger herself, she needed to do more. And the bottom line is Nine years later, this child is 23, and this child must now struggle to survive. Make no mistake, the hour-long smoke and mirrors conversation this morning from the prosecutor is not necessarily completely true. There is no excuse for what happened to this child, and Kim Worthy bears much of the responsibility. I'm not sure what else I can and should say, but at this point, this is a family that needs to heal, and yes, their privacy should be respected. Thank you for coming today. We will be taking questions. They're going to get Devontae now, so I'm asking everyone, please keep your questions very limited for him. He's been through a a terrible ordeal in his life. So I'm asking everyone to just keep it short and simple. Maybe later, 
in our journey. We will be open to do interviews, but I'm asking everyone as Devontae mother and everybody in the press, you know me. I'm not, I would give an interview at the right time. I have never ever turned no one down for an interview. Even when I didn't want to give you guys one, I gave you one. So I'm asking everybody now as I bring my son make all comments once again short and very simple this is his first official day out please don't overwhelm him please don't ask some questions that you know that you shouldn't ask he's been in prison he has not been at cedar point and if i feel you doing that i would take Devontae from here thank you no um first meal was Sesame seed chicken, some sweet and sour chicken, um, egg rolls, and shrimp fried rice. <laughs> yeah, like, um, I have been craving Chinese food for about, like, four years, so I told my mama, like, you'll be wasting your time cooking, you know, like, because I'm not going to eat it. Like, I want some Chinese food, so, like, that's what I went and got, some Chinese food, so, yeah. Um, Keep fighting. Don't like. Don't give up. You know, like um, you got to stay strong mentally, spiritually, emotionally. And if you know you're in prison for something you didn't do, just don't roll over. Like, like don't, like don't roll over. Don't, don't give in. Don't let them break you. You know, um, I was, I was almost to that, to that breaking point. You know, many times. You know, and um, I just stay positive. You know, I just like stay positive. So like that's what I would say to them. You know. <laughs> um, I most definitely would like, you know, to share my story with um, at-risk youth um, and um, bring awareness to the um, juvenile dealing in the um, yeah, justice system, especially when it comes to, like, um, um, criminal justice, as far as, like, juveniles being sentenced 30, 40 years at, like, 15, 16 years old. Like, you talking about, like, that's the second chance for us when it's not. You sending us to a place where there's no programs, like, violence, you know, um, mental health treatment is like terrible, you know, so it's like, what did you expect, you know, after 30 years, what type of man you think you get, you know, so like, once you release him, you know, so, yeah, I'm gonna definitely want to do that, motivational speaking and stuff like that, you know, so, yeah. Her, 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 um, and, and like, I was, I will receive like letters from people all over the country, people from like all over the world I've never met, you know, and they will always tell me, Devontae, you're getting out of prison, stay strong, <laughs> you know, so like that motivated me a whole like a lot, a whole lot, you know, I had a lot of people behind me, you know, motivating me and just like reminding me, you know, I don't supposed to be here, so like you getting out one day, you know, it may take some time, but just Prepare yourself for that time when it's time for you to get out. Don't prepare for your, don't prepare yourself for this 30 year, 39 years you got to do in prison. Don't prepare yourself for that. Prepare yourself to get out because you're gonna be getting out one day. So, yeah. <laughs> A little bit of nervous, you know, um, but like with the people I got behind me, you know, I, I, I think I'll be good. I think I'll be good. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. It feel good, like, um, um, 
Like, it's this song I had on my MP3 player, you know, like, you know, one of the lyrics is, you know, go like, what a time to be alive. And, it, and like, that's the, that's the feeling I got, you know, like, what a time to be alive, you know. Um, I'm, 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 I know it's going to take some time for me to get back used to things and, and normalize, but like, like, the hard part is over, you know. Like, the hardest part was getting me out of prison, you know. So, I think I'll be, I'll be ready for it. Yes, it is. Um, I, I, I had no choice, you know, I had no choice but to, like, grow. I couldn't stay in the same place, you know, so, like, I had no choice, like, but to grow mentally, spiritually, emotionally, you know, and develop myself, especially for, for like, some of the things I want to do when it comes to dealing with juveniles and the justice and things like that. I had no choice but to grow and, 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 to, and to learn and read, right, and things like that, so, yeah. And I knew I was getting out one day, and I know, like, in order to go, like, to go somewhere in life, like, you've got to have, like, some type of, like, education. You know, I didn't want to get out of prison, you know, whether it was eight years, ten years, twenty years, you know, and they was letting me out, and I was stuck in the same place like that. Yeah, that would have been, yeah. We're only going to take two more, and we'll be done with the press conference. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for the kind words. Mm -hmm. One more. That's it. You're doing that for this one. You're doing that for this one. You're doing that for this one. Roberto, nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. Heard a lot about you. <laughs> I mean, for a while, like, of course, like, you'll be, like, angry, mad, bitter, but at the end of the day, you know, like, um, the people who played a part in it, you know, like, when you, the days you angry, mad, bitter, don't feel like eating, like, what they doing? They living their life. So, like, me being mad, angry, it didn't, it didn't do nothing. It would just hurt me, you know? It wasn't, like, hurting them. So, like, what's the use of being mad, you know? All right, Roberto, and then we'll wrap it up. I, I just have a couple closing remarks. Amen. I know. You, you, you've been there. I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. Thank you. So we, want, we, we want to thank everyone for coming.